Welcome back, everyone. Dan Vega here. And today we're going to be talking about a tweet I sent out yesterday. There's a new template in town. If you take a look at this, I am showing off the spring initializer. And if you go in and type in template, all our familiar friends are there. Timeleaf, Apache Free Marker, Mustache, Groovy Templates. And now there's a new one called JTE. Now, JTE is this Java templating engine, and you could use it with Spring Boot before, but now it's on the Spring Initializer, so I figured this would be a very good time to give it a look. Before we get started, this video is not sponsored by anybody but myself. Uh, if you want to learn more about me, head over to danvega.dev. Also, I love to write. Uh, I'm back to writing my weekly newsletter. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and sign up for free just to find out what I've been up to this week, the following week, uh, things that are going on in the world of Java and Spring. And I've also created a new newsletter because I didn't have enough on my plate. Uh, but I really enjoy writing and talking about artificial intelligence. So this is more of a general AI newsletter, not everything to do with Spring or Java. That stuff will kind of stay on this channel and on my general newsletter. But if you're interested in, in that, again, this is another free resource for you. So we're going to start off by going over to start.spring.io. We're going to create a new project, and we're going to include the web dependency. And now we're going to type in template and use JTE. So we're going to create a Java project using the latest version of Spring Boot. I'll say uh, dev.danvega. We'll just call this JTE. And you can use whatever version of Java you'd like. JDK 23 just came out, so I'm going to use that. Uh, with that, you can go ahead and generate this project, download it, open it up in whatever ID you're most productive in. I'll use uh, IntelliJ Ultimate for this particular uh, intro. So I want to just show you off the repo real quick. GitHub.com slash Dan Vega, hello JTE. This will go into the little bit of examples that we're going to go through today. This is really just a gentle introduction to how to get started with it. But what I wanted to point out here was why you might want to reach for this over something like Timeleaf. So I have a bunch of things here. Well, let's talk about a couple of them. Uh, performance. JTE compiles templates to Java bytecode, resulting in a very efficient runtime execution. This can lead to better performance, especially in high traffic applications. Compile time checking. Uh, JTE performs extensive compile time checks. This will help you catch errors uh, at compile time rather than runtime. A simpler syntax. Uh, it does offer a nice syntax for Java developers to pick up quickly. Lightweight. It has really good IDE support. A big one for me is hot reloading. So as I make a change in my template, I can just refresh the browser, use a browser plugin to refresh it automatically, and those changes are there. I don't have to wait a long time for those to get there. Uh, you get some pre-compilation and explicit over implicit, which means I'm going to declare some variables that I'm going to use in that template at the top of the template. So uh, it makes for better documentation. If I'm a new developer going into that template, I know what's available to me without having to kind of figure that out. So. It's so real easy to get it started with. Uh, with that, we'll head over to the IDE and look at a couple examples of how easy this is to use uh, and what a joy it is to work. All right, so I'm here in my main application. I'm gonna go ahead and refactor this. I like to rename this to just application. Uh, that looks good. And the first thing that we're gonna need is a controller. So let's come in here and create a controller. We'll just call this the home controller. We're not gonna do anything fancy here today. We're going to mark this as a controller, and then we need an endpoint. So we'll go ahead and say uh, we'll set this git mapping to uh, a root, and then we're going to return a string. We'll call this home. And again, just like with Timeleaf, we are returning the name of a template. So I'm going to say return index. And the only difference here is in the past, we might have come into resources templates, dropped in, say, an index.html template here for something like Timeleaf. In this case, you can see we've already got our JTE folder set up for us. This is where we're going to put our templates. So we're going to come in here. We're going to create a new file. We'll call this uh, index.jte. Now, if this is the first time, whoops, if the, this is the first time that you're doing this uh, and you haven't done this before and you're using IntelliJ, you will probably be asked if you want to in, uh, install the plugin for JT. This gives you some of the code assist, the IntelliSense, the refactoring, et cetera. 
Uh, so go ahead and do that if you haven't done so already. So the first thing that we're gonna do is just set up an HTML file. So I'm gonna say um, this and give me uh, a simple HTML document. So I'll say hello JTE and uh, okay, now we can go ahead and get started. So in my controller, I wanna set up a variable. I wanna pass something into that template. So to do so, uh, just like I would with any Spring MVC, I'm going to uh, get access to the model and I'm going to set, uh, let's just say a name. So I'm gonna say model dot uh, add attribute, we'll call this name and uh, let's just say Dan. So now that I have that available, I wanna use that here in this template. Maybe I want to do something like, hello, Dan, and but I wanna replace this with the actual variable that is being passed down to us. So the way that we can do that is we first need to declare a parameter. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna say uh, at param, so at param, this is going to be of type string and this is going to be name. Now don't include the semicolon there, you'll get yelled at, uh, which is nice, I don't wanna use semicolon. So now I can come in here and just give it the variable and that should be all we need to get started. Um, let's go ahead and run the application. Okay, and it started, so let's go over to the browser. All right, and if we go to localhost 8080, I'm already there, uh, we can see that it says, hello, Dan. All right, so good start there. Let's go back to IntelliJ. And now what I need to do is just kind of build upon this. Now what I wanna do is, maybe I wanna set a title and a description for uh, what's going on here. So we can go ahead and introduce uh, a type. So I wanna introduce a page record. So let's go ahead and say Java class, we'll say this is a page and this is a record, and a page has a title and a description. Description. So now we can go ahead and uh, set that here. So what I wanna do is say var page is equal to new page. Uh, we'll say the title is hello Java template engine. And then the description is, this is my homepage, right? Nothing fancy there. Now we'll go ahead and say model.addAttribute. We'll call this page and we'll pass in our page. So now in our uh, index.jte, what I wanna do is make that available. So I'll say, um, let's go ahead and import. We wanna import that type. So I wanna import dev.danvega.jte.page. So now that's uh, available. And then I'll get a parameter. So I'll say uh, param page page. So now what I can do is down here, we'll say um, page.title, right? Um, and that will be our title. But maybe I want a description here as well. So maybe I have a meta uh, name is description and the content is the description. But what if we only wanted this there? Uh, let's just put that in. So let's just say page dot description, right? Okay, so now I have those two available. Um, now I'm restarting this because I made changes to the home controller. We could have included the dev tools and then this would automatically restart it and it wouldn't have mattered if the uh, JTE template changed because that automatically gets updated. So now we can go back to our browser and if we look at, oops, so we have an error. Let's see what's going on. Oh, so apparently I just didn't save this home controller, so that wasn't available, so now it should be. Okay, so now we see the title up there, and if we were to inspect this and take a look under head and look at the description, this is my home page. So that, um, we are making available a type, uh, which is good. Now what we wanna do is just one more kind of uh, introduction to this. Uh, let's go ahead and create a list of things. So. Let's say that I wanted to create uh, some items and we'll say this is equal to list dot of uh, my item one, my item two, and my item three. 
So that will give us a list of items. And then what we want to do is we want to add an attribute for those items. Uh, and we'll call that items. And now what I want to do is go back to JTE and just talk about how we can iterate over this. So we can do a bunch of things too. Um, I'll just kind of point out that if we want to do some comments that are not really compiled here, we can say uh, this is a comment and will not be rendered just so we can kind of show um, that off, right? And now what I want to do is I want to iterate over this list. So I want to say, um, at. So everything kind of starts with this um, at symbol. You can see we're starting to get some IntelliSense here of what we can do. Uh, I'll type in if. You could keep going, but I found it easier if you kind of let uh, this finish out. So um, if. So you can see it kind of gives us that um, brace bracket in there, um, letting us type out the if statement. It also gives us the closing end if. And so what I'll do is I'll say if items dot um, oops, I'm sorry, I didn't make this available yet. So let's go ahead and say param. Um, this is going to be a list of strings and I'll call this items. And now what I can do is, again, we are working with Java objects, so we're used to, so we know that a list of streams, strings, we can go ahead and check something on. We can say, is it empty? So if it is uh, empty, then we wanna do one thing. Uh, maybe we'll say, um, you have no items, uh, items, right? And then what we can do is we can just say else, right? So else, and what are we gonna do? We'll spit out a list of ULs, so UL, um, and then what we can do is iterate over this. So we'll say four, and then we're gonna do string item, because we know it's a list of strings in items, and what we're gonna do is we'll have a list item and that will simply include the item. So again, as a Java developer, I feel at home here, being able to declare the um, variables that I'm going to use. So we can see that that automatically imported java.util.list. This is a list of strings. Um, I check if that item's uh, list is empty. If it is, I display that else. I'm going to iterate over each item in that list and simply output it. This, again, uh, very familiar for me. So I'm gonna go back to the browser and if we refresh this, we see my lists. And again, just to kind of show um, this off, I want to go back here and not recompile everything. I just wanna say, um, so if we are in here, let's just say that we have, you have, uh, let's say, oops, you have uh, items, sorry, items.size. So you have three items, right? And I'm not gonna restart my application. I'm just gonna go back to the browser, uh, refresh this, and you can see we have three items. So we get that uh, quick compilation. We, we automatically can like see those changes in the template. And as somebody who loves to work on like front end applications, I appreciate this. Like I want to immediately see those changes uh, in the browser. So that's all I got to show off today. Uh, I just wanted to give a quick intro to this. Uh, again, if you want to go ahead and check this repo out, uh, hello JTE. It has some uh, a reason, a way to run this to get started, but more or less uh, some reasons why you might choose JTE over something like Timeleaf and then some of the examples that we went through today. So friends, uh, I hope you found this uh, really useful. Uh, I'm a big fan of this new addition to the Spring Initializer. Even though we could use it before, it's nice to have it there as an option on the Spring Initializer. So let me know in the comments below. Have you used JT before? Are you gonna use it now? Is this something you're looking forward to diving into? And again, I hope you found this useful. If you did, friends, do me a favor. Leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding.